So guys, Project Elixir 4.2 is finally available for Realme 6, 6i, Realme 7, Narzo 20 Pro and Narzo 30 4G and the Realme 6i is Indian unit. So in short, Realme RM685 devices. So today, I am going to review this ROM because I have installed this on my Realme 6i. So just like other reviews, let's get started from the about phone. So in about phone, you can see this is version 4.2 and one thing i noticed this time is the latest kernel the kernel is 4.14.341 open ela and this kernel is same for every build of project elixir i mean to say that it's the same in every devices like recently i installed the project elixir 4.2 on my redmi note 10 pro and also redmi note 9 pro and i saw that the kernel is same i mean the name that is 4.14.341 open ela kernel the Linux status is enforcing which is again good for security purpose and the security update is of 5 april 2024 so there is nothing left to talk about now in system we have the keyboard gesture status bar tuner date and time and the elixir updater and if i go to the gesture you can see we have the same options like other custom roms we have navigation mode and in navigation mode we get these modes and in gesture navigation we can customize the lengths of left edge right edge pin length etc so you can customize this and we also get option to hide the navigation hint the back gesture animation the back gesture haptic etc now we have shortcuts like quick torch playback control quickly open camera etc and in accessibility we get these options we have system controls flash notification so when a notification or call comes the flashlight will blink and this works really fine and in the apps we get clone apps so we can use multiple instances of same application now we also get the game space where we can add the games and any other application but i had added the cpu throttling test app but that was not a good result and then we have special app access now going to the notification in notification we get the conversation the bubbles the notification history the annoying notification and the flash notification which i recently showed you in the accessibility section now talking about the battery in battery we get the battery optimization and in battery optimization we get charging control battery saver battery optimization and if i go to battery optimization this is the section battery optimization now in charging control we get three modes just like the last build and battery information you will not get the battery information because it crashes when i go to the battery information you can see the settings crashes and i have to open it again and talking about the battery backup of this build i easily got six to seven hours of screen time and if you keep your phone in idle condition it will consume very less battery because I have tested it and I kept my phone for around 7 to 8 hours. I think more than that, but the battery draining was only 3%. So the battery backup is good and the active drain is around 10 to 12%, not more than that. But it varies when you do gaming and other stuff. Now in wallpaper and style, we get this typical Android 14 wallpaper style and we get these resets and in more wallpapers we get these options we get all the google wallpaper options and we also get the live wallpapers and i have already set a live wallpaper as you can see it looks cool and also in home screen we get these options and we get the app grid right here and when i turn on the themed icons we get the themed icons in the home screen but not in the app drawer now in display we get the dark theme, the night light, both are working fine and we get the refresh rate and in 90Hz refresh rate we get an option called adaptive refresh rate. So the refresh rate will automatically decrease to 70Hz I think when you are using any other application which does not support 90Hz or if that app supports optimization then the refresh rate will reduce. Then we get the full screen apps and ambient display so basically the pickup to wake does not work but from display if i turn on the ambient display now in connected devices we get these options and in network and internet we get we don't get any extra options we get the private dns and in private dns we don't get any preset 
so this is all about the settings now talking about the customization we get same customizations as the previous build and this time we get a welcome message and in miscellaneous we get the advanced restart and the unlock higher fps in games and also in google photos we get the unlimited storage and here also we get the flash notification so the flash notification is an option that we get everywhere in the rom and we get the game space right here which is the same game space that we get in the app section and we get the volume haptics so when you decrease or increase the volume the haptic sh feedback should be there but it's not working then we have an option make heads up less annoying so i'm not talking about all the rest of the options because they are just same like the 4.1 build and if you did not watch the 4.1 build you can watch this video and come to this video to notice the changes now let's talk about the performance so the performance in this rom is really good i did not see any major lag or stutter the ui is almost smooth but i think it's quite slow you can see but it works really fine you will not get any major lags or something now talking about the benchmark i performed the cpu throttling test two times so this one is without using any performance mods or something and this was the performance that i got when i added this cpu throttling test app in the game so i got this performance when i added the app in the game space and this does not make any change that's why i did not add it the antutu and the result of antutu was tested in the normal mode i did not apply any gaming tweaks or did not use any performance scripts etc and i got this much score so the total score is 3,29,654 which is a decent score not too good i have got around 3,79,000 in some custom roms so this is pretty average score so this build of project elixir is basically based on battery backup so you are going to get a good battery life and a decent amount of customizations and talking about the stock camera the stock camera of this build is the lineage camera as you can see if i show you the about you can see this is the lineage OS camera and i installed this gcam which i 1.5 gcam which i 8.1 version 1.5 and this works really fine there was no issue so this is all about the review now let's move to the gaming test so guys in this rom the bgmi stops automatically and the game space aps meter also does not work and this is not the game space actually the game space aps meter is not actually working so let me relaunch the bgmi so guys you can see the game space aps meter is not working otherwise it it is shown in this section but the aosp aps meter is available but not working you can see there is no fps it's just the icon so you have to basically see the performance by this video and this video is being recorded at 60 fps so i hope you will be able to do that and the performance is not that good in this rom i will say because i have tested the bgmi in this rom personally and in team that match i get around 35 to 40 fps even if the frame rate is set to 60 and the same goes for 90 fps mode there is no such improvement and for battle royale i don't want to say anything so you can see we are getting around 40 fps as you can see by the smoothness And let me show you the frame rate once so it is set on 60 fps so even if i turn on the 90 fps mode there is no such improvement and guys i will remind you that i am not using any performance modes or any scripts and i am not even rooted so this is all stock performance that you can see right here and the stock performance is not good at all 
If you want good gaming, you have to use performance script. So guys, this is it for the gaming review. I don't want to extend this because the surrounding temperature is 43 degree as you can see and the battery temperature is also 43 so let's quit the VGMI now talking about the installation let me reboot to the recovery and this ROM has the advanced reboot which is by default turned on and this is good for beginners and guys this recovery is EBRP 4.0 and this is and this is a new custom recovery I mean new build of PBRP and this supports decryption in Android 14 and you can see all files are available so the installation is just like other uh, F2FS ROM installation you have to just use this recovery any other recovery is not supported for flashing this ROM so first thing is you have to check the file is showing or not and make sure that you don't pause the download otherwise the file gets corrupted so first of all just like other builds change the cache by going to repair a change file system then change file system to ext4 because if you are using any android 13 or 14 based rom the file system will be already set to f2fs so you have to do that so after changing the cache you can go to advanced file and select the data and do the same after that go to install and flash the custom rom from wherever you have saved the rom zip and after flashing the rom go to wipe and go to advanced wipe select the data and change file system to f2fs and again go to wipe and advanced wipe change the cache to f2fs and then just reboot into system and guys before doing that make sure to remove the lock screen otherwise the rom gets encrypted and you will not get decryption even if you use this latest feature like recovery and this is the boot animation of the rom which is just similar like the last build there is no change so guys this is it for this video if you found this video helpful make sure to subscribe to this channel and if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up i will see you in the next one bye bye